In realistic ground battles at higher battle ratings, you will start to face SPAs with radars that provide lead indicators. These machines are significantly more effective at destroying planes. That could look like a very bad news for anyone who likes to use planes in this game mode. But do planes really become obsolete? Especially the ones that have only cannons and no secondary load at all? At first I was skeptical, I wasn't expecting much. So I put the British Meteor in a lineup just because I like the idea of flying above everyone else, observing the battlefield from above, like a king, watching those earthworms fight each other, those peasants who don't deserve to be up here in my shiny plane with my pay to win stickers that prove my status. But I digress. What I found out is that every flight yields me approximately 2 kills. And I am not a good player, if my KD ratio is higher than 1, I am already happy. But why was this plane so effective? At first glance, everything is pointing that it should be completely opposite. I had worse results with lower battle rating planes, that could carry bombs, where opponents didn't have SPAs with radars, where players had less experience. So why was this plane so much different? The answer is, because I have finally learned to play War Thunder. Nope, just kidding. Actually, there are many reasons, and they all add up. First of all, plane's battle rating is 7.7. .7. This rating means a lot, because it determines what vehicles you will face in battles. And that has a lot to do with how successful this plane can be. You will meet SPAs with radars in most battles, but not all enemies will have them. It's much easier to avoid one such SPAA, since you can focus your attention on it and react to its actions in time. The range of effective fire is around 2 or 3 kilometers. You can relatively easily avoid their fire just by keeping your distance and making adjustments in your flight trajectory once you notice the stream of projectiles coming your way. Just a little change in aircraft's pitch axis will be enough to get out of the projectile's way. You won't meet any SPAs with missiles that are not that easy to avoid, so you should feel relatively safe as long as you pay attention and nobody can get you by surprise. At the same time, battle rating means that you will meet a lot of light tanks. They will be your main victims. Bradleys, Marders, various wheel tanks and BMPs that are literally everywhere. Many of those vehicles use low caliber autocannons, so even if they don't have radars, they can pose serious danger for planes. But most of the time, they will be busy fighting other tanks. Unless you attack the same target multiple times, most likely they will be unprepared for attacks from above. Second reason is cannons and the amount of rounds they have. There are not many planes that have that many 20mm rounds. 780 rounds should last for around 15 seconds of continuous fire from all four cannons. And the damage output is so high that one second burst is more than enough to destroy any unarmored target. I consider myself a spray and pray type of guy, the proper term describing my ammunition usage would be wasting ammunition, and even I had enough rounds to remove few extra opponents from the battlefield. Cannons are built in the nose of the aircraft, very close to each other. That allows you to concentrate the fire where you need it. When machine guns are mounted on wings, there is a weak spot depending on where you set gun's targeting distance to be. Attacking the target closer or further away from it won't be that effective. While Meteor's cannons are placed at the center of the aircraft right next to each other, so you can be sure that all projectiles hit the place you are targeting. I was mainly using the belt for ground targets, mostly filled with armor-piercing rounds. It allowed me to effectively attack more targets. Medium tanks usually have roofs that are around 20mm, so with armor-piercing rounds that are able to penetrate over 30mm, I was able to penetrate most medium tanks. I'm not even talking about light tanks. They can be attacked from any angle, since those rounds go through the whole vehicle without issues. 
AP rounds are good enough for planes as well. It doesn't matter that they don't explode. The sheer amount of bullets piercing the plane will do a massive amount of damage that won't be stopped by bulletproof glass or thin armor plates that are usually protecting the pilot. Since Meteor cannot carry secondary load, you can expect to be one of the most maneuverable jets in the air. Dealing with prop fighters is easy. Just boom and zoom. They won't be able to keep up with your speed and climb rate. While jets will be more difficult, most of the time players prefer to play something heavier, something that can carry bombs, so you will maintain maneuverability advantage in most cases. In my experience, approximately more than half of enemy planes will be propeller driven, half of jets will carry secondary load, and only the rest will be able to challenge you and pose real danger in air combat. You will be able to research a G-suit modification that puts some clothes on the pilot, so you don't need to censor the game footage if you decide to record your gameplay. The G-suit also increases the forces pilot can sustain, though if the pilot can sustain more Gs, it doesn't mean that the airframe can. This extreme overload message is there for a reason. Few times I simply broke the wing mid-flight when pulling out of the dive. So if it's not extreme situation when you get dangerously close to the ground, it's better to be more careful and pull out slower. The plane also has bulletproof glass and armor plates. Not every plane has them, so it's nice to have a little more protection. They won't protect from armor piercing rounds, but the armor will at least reduce the amount of fragments that can reach the pilot when you are being shot with low caliber high explosive ammunition. In general, I was more than happy to fly this plane, especially since I wasn't expecting too much from it in the beginning. There will be plenty of fly tanks, and most planes are outperformed in air combat either in dogfight or by using Meteor's speed and climb rate advantage. I would rate this plane 7 broken wings out of 10. While the vehicle can be very useful at decreasing enemies count, it's always worth remembering that planes cost more respawn points than light tanks you will mostly be killing. It's worth taking this plane if you know that opponents have a lot of planes providing close air support. After getting rid of them you can attack tanks too. But I think it would be more beneficial for the victory to use a tank if the sky is clear and you know that opponents have multiple SPAAs with radars that won't allow you to use the full potential of this aircraft. 